that back from heat treat, and then we sandblast it. Second round of Tom Dugan frames. Yeah, the Dr. Pepper color is going to look really cool. Hit up Tom at Empire for those. Hey, Chris, what's up? Oh, there you go. Uh, people always ask us about translucent paint on forks. And we can't do it, unfortunately, because the forks are heat treated. So that's what a heat treated fork looks like when it comes back from heat treat. It's got this scale on there. Some of the stuff flying off. Can you see that in the camera? Yep. Uh, so we get that back from heat treat. And then we sandblast it, so it ends up looking like this. We get all that off there, we get a nice clean surface. And then we send it up for zinc plating. And the zinc plating is what you see here on the steer tube. It's a really thin coating. It doesn't add any thickness at all, so it doesn't interfere with the way your stem fits over your steer tube, but it keeps all this from rusting. So it gives you a nice coating on the inside and the outside so that you don't get any corrosion or anything instead of having this raw. Back in the early days, we would leave this raw, but then it would start to rust. Then we mask it off here, mask it all the way up and send it out to paint. And we usually, you know, we do solid colors or we polish it and we do chrome. But if we were to do a translucent paint on a sandblasted fork or a zinc plated fork, it would just look like this. So you wouldn't have any of the weld rainbows or anything like that. So that's why we don't do it. But we are talking about doing a little bit thicker material on the fork legs and making a little bit heavier duty fork that doesn't require heat treating that we could then do translucent colors on so keep your eyes open for that but it's not going to be feather light like these you know pitchfork xlt's um or wide mouth fork so anyway that's why forks can't be translucent paint right now hey jug what's up oh hey what's up Greg? in the shot just uh, we got these new second round of Tom Dugan frames. We're actually doing some pretty cool colors on these. We're actually doing uh, an Empire exclusive Dr. Pepper color. It's gonna be that kind of that burgundy. It's gonna be really cool. But we're also gonna do them in that competition orange and white. So don't have those. A bunch of dealers will have them as well. I've always liked these frames. Wishbone. Really cool frames. So yeah. Yeah, the Dr. Pepper color is gonna look really cool. Hit up Tom at Empire for those. And then we got the stickers. Made in-house by James Murphy. Hand shout, shout out James Murphy. Shout out Murph. And then since we're on uh, the topic of Empire, we're gonna send this over to him. You know, a couple uh, Factory Fridays ago, we did the stamp for the Rambler bar. This is something we did for Empire, for an old Fit Rider. Uh, well, I think also Cardona for us and Cardona, yeah. So, and then Hawk for Fit. Yeah, old Fit Rider and the Cardona. So these are really cool. Who knows what they're gonna make? Maybe some keychains. All right, tell us your name, where you're from, what, what's going on? Uh, War Pig Jeff from uh, Woodier area. I'm looking to get a new bike because obviously I've had this one for decades. <laughs> and uh, just here to pick up some swag and stuff, man. Happy All right, well, tell me about this bike. Where, you, where did you get it? What year? So, uh, shoot, this is actually my second War Pig. So... Uh, the first one I got when it, the, you guys first came out with it, it was the burgundy one with the green decals. Oh, yeah. I got that guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Take a look at that. Nice. <laughs> War Pig. Yeah. yeah. What we got back here? Jeez, you are War Pig, Jeff. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, yeah, I got the profile cranks on it. I mean, e everything is probably on this bike is probably at least 15 years old. <laughs> but that goes to show you how badass S&M is. Hell yeah. Man. It sticks up, baby. And where did you get this originally? 
So uh, the, my original one I got from Atomic Bikes, no longer around in uh, Whittier. But this one I got from my buddy Robbo. Uh, he bought this one probably a couple years after I got mine. And you know, he, he got into playing bass guitar. He's in a band and everything. And long story short, we ended up trading. So I got this guy and I've been sitting on this guy for probably the past 20 years. Wow. Something like it. <laughs> well, that's a sweet ride, man. Thanks for coming by. Hell yeah, Chris. Thanks, Thanks for, for being me, on uh, this week's Factory Friday. Fuck yeah. Even though it's Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the way Factory Friday works. I hate, yeah, to, yeah. I hate to break it to everybody. Yeah, yeah. I you know? That. But Factory <laughs> Friday is pretty much Factory Thursday. <laughs> It's factory week. It's, factory, it's fac factory week. Yeah. Is this uh, is this your new office, Murph? This is the office. Yeah. Oh man. Got a great view, bro. You can't beat it. All right. Well, thank you. Fuck yeah. All right. Tom rides bikes on Instagram. Give him a follow. What do we got going on here? Tom rides bikes on Instagram. We're uh, putting the vit holes in the Mad Dog Monastase. Oh, yeah, that's what I like to hear. So first stop goes like that. Next stop goes like that. And that keeps both the holes completely uh, Comple square. Yeah, completely square, completely hidden under that stay. But, and so when they weld it, there's not a bunch of heat build up. Also, when you chrome plate these, this will allow the fluid to drain out. So the fluid doesn't get trapped in the uh, seat stay. I didn't think about that. Yeah, because if you only have a hole on one side, then the fluid can go in, it won't come out, and your frame will be full of fluid. Yeah, but when, you, when you have vent holes on both sides, the fluid can come out. So, all right, thank you, Thomas. All right, Jaime, what, uh, what are we doing? Just check in the finishing uh, first half of the CCR frame. Just check in the wells, make sure everything is nice and good and perfect. So you're doing a little quality control. Yep. So these are gonna be the 14 millimeter rear drop uh, CCRs. How are they looking? Looking really good. All right. Uh, All right, so last week we were talking about the stamping tooling for the uh, Rambler uh, logo. So we got the parts back here these are the these are the little guys for the bar and then uh, we also have some frame gussets with that logo on there too here's the frame gussets so these are the first two sample bars that we did one of them we did with the edges on the plate kind of square and then on the other one we knocked the edges off before we fused it on there i think it looks better with the edges knocked off but here's balls to tell us a little bit about what this bar is all about so Rambler Bar, it's with the Geo the kids have been running forever. Um, it's got the tighter box, so it's not as wide down here in the clamp area. Geometry wise, um, we're gonna do 8.5, 9, 9.25. Um, that is 29 inches wide, three degree up sweep, 11 back. And we've got four samples going right now for Lucas, Nathan, Mean Horse, and Mark. Patosny. Patosny. <laughs> um, we're gonna get the badges on it, the other two, and then we'll get them off the paint. These will be available in matte black and gloss clear. So, what S and M bars would you say these are most similar to, or if they're if it if it's a cross between a couple bars? It's kind of a middle version of the Credence Geo, but with the tight bends, it's kind of, it's different than all the others. Um, it's got a two and a half inch radius on all four bends. So it's kind of like a bigger slam, just bigger, taller, but then your up sweep, back sweep's a little bit different. And you mentioned that uh, the guys have been riding a, a, what is it, an old FBM bar? Yeah, they originally had, well, they have the M bars, and then they had the Grand Slam as well, which is the same exact box that we went off of. So, 
keeping along the same lines as what they've been riding. And all four of these samples are the same size? Yeah, these are all nine inch. That's what all four of them wanted. And is this thing, does this bar have a name yet or is it just kind of the Rambler sample bar? It's just a Rambler sampler. A Ram Rambler, Rambler sampler. sampler, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> and is this the one with the edges knocked off here? This one right here. Okay, so that. So. All right, well let's, uh, Let's put those uh, labels on the on the next two prototypes and I'll film a little bit of that. So we're working on the uh, last two samples of the Rambler sampler, 9.5 you said? No, these are the nine inch. Oh, these, so the, all four of these are nine inch? Yeah, all four of these are nine, but there's a correction. They're gonna be available in 8.5, nine, and 9.5. Okay, all right. So half inch increments. Kind of getting a little badge on right now. He's gonna tack it and then fuse it. Yeah. And fusing is basically putting it on using the torch, but not adding rod. Yeah. So almost melting the two materials together. But not adding filler so material. Adding filler rod. Yeah, because it's not it's not necessary. No. These sit so tight on there that no gap, it's easy to just use them. So staring at this weld a little bit like staring at the eclipse. The eclipse. <laughs> yeah. All right. Rambler samplers on their way out. Are these getting painted or are they going out raw? We're gonna do two matte black, two gloss clear. Okay. Trying to get them done today. Paint shop should be here. Paint shop's here right now. Oh. So we gotta go, we gotta get on it. So we've got the paint shop here, <coughs> picking up. And these uh, coincidentally are uh, our vintage motorcycle bars. We had the big uh, Biltwell 100 race last weekend. And I'm not sure that anybody has seen the 10 inch leather snap pad. This is what I ride on my old Husky. So these are these are Husky bars, and this 10-inch pad works good on it works good on all the vintage bars. I mean, this one, you know, is really wide, but some of them are not quite as wide. But this pad is is bigger than your average pad. And I'm not sure people know we have these, but they're they're super sweet. And we sell them just by themselves. So it's like a leather material, chrome snaps, and look at this, made in USA by Flight. Made right up there in Oregon. So check them out if you're a vintage motorcycle. Well, actually, these will work good on a like a cruiser or a clunker. Bike. Yeah, a clunker bike. Exactly. Yep. These are good for that. Yep. And these pads you can fit on regular BMX bars too, even though they're a little bit wider. So what do we got here? Uh, Dugan frames. Yeah, Dugans. Some squibs, uh, squib XLs, blue angel and black. A bunch of different bars. Highs, motor highs, perfect tens, all kinds of stuff. Some reworks? Yeah, a few reworks. Um, and that's about it. All right. Yeah, LAMF. Thank you. Rambler uh, logo.